Holstein of Cedar Redheads. The head coach for Cedar is Eric Dilson. The principal of Cedar High School is John Dodds. And here is the Redmen batting order. Batting first, the catcher wearing number 12, John Boyer. Batting second, the shortstop wearing number 9, Riker Tom. Batting third, the third baseman wearing number 5, Trey Eslin. Batting fourth, the starting pitcher wearing number 24, Brecken Lewis. Batting fifth, the first baseman wearing number 23, Johnny Jenkins. Batting sixth, the right fielder wearing number 4, Dusty. Hello, testing, 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 hey, 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 okay, looks like it's working, I just don't hear it. Welcome to St. George, Utah, Bruce Hurst Field on the beautiful campus of Dixie State University. I'm Mike Butler, along with Julia Bell, our engineer today, to uh, bring you 3A semifinal baseball between the Pine View Panthers and the Cedar Redmen. This ought to be one of the best games. As a matter of fact, it would not be surprising if uh, both of these teams end up uh, facing one another tomorrow for the state championship game. Pineview with a uh, nice win yesterday. Eight to nothing win over Carbon. As Dakota Donovan went the distance, uh, uh, pitched effectively. And uh, but interesting little st uh, stat as I as we looked back at that game a little bit. No uh, extra base hits for Pineview. All singles in uh, in scoring that eight run, including a uh, two run RBI by Donovan. Uh, in the uh, sixth inning, Pineview was able to kind of loosen things up a little bit here and uh, and get five runs in the sixth innings against Carbon. Uh, as we said, Don Dakota Donovan, the junior, who has uh, already verbally committed to Oregon State in the Pac-12, uh, in the start yesterday and uh, had to had to help himself with, at the plate as well as uh, throwing some pretty uh, pretty sweet cheese at the uh, at the dinos yesterday. So. For uh, for Cedar, I tell you what though, uh, 21 and five on the year. You know they started out just just hot as can be, nine out of ten to get things going, and then uh, they have won 12 out of their last 13, including six in a row, and a lot of power yesterday from the Redmen. Two uh, home runs over the fence, one by Brecken Lewis, who we will be seeing on the mound today, and yesterday's pitcher Dusty Hanna. So they uh, did a nice job to try to get, uh, uh, including one big inning, a four-run fifth inning, as we are getting ready to go here. So we have a number of great sponsors that we'll talk about today and uh, appreciate their help as well. Tyler Johnson, the shortstop, will get things going for the Panthers today. And 
First pitch by Brecken Lewis, and Johnson takes a cut at it, and it will fly out to right field and for the first out. So one pitch and one out. That brings up Logan LaFemina, the second baseman. Had a nice game yesterday, a couple of uh, one hit and uh, scored once. First pitch called strike. Yeah. Two bouncer to the second baseman and uh, easily thrown out four to three. Lewis uh, so far with an easy go, only three pitches so far and two outs. Third batter in the lineup for the Panthers today, center fielder Connor Clark. Clark wearing number 29 and first pitch. A uh, little bit off there, one ball and uh, no strikes. Cedar the last time to, to uh, defeat Pineview. The last team as they've uh, won every game since then. Curveball. by Lewis, catches the outside corner. One hopper to the shortstop and an easy out and an easy one, two, three inning for Cedar. So one, two, three inning and uh, we'll be back after these messages from some of our sponsors here, here on the Deseret News. to gym intimidation. Say yes to Planet Fitness. We're not a gym. We're Planet Fitness. Your locally owned and operated Planet Fitness is a proud sponsor of our amazing high school athletic programs. Our game today is sponsored by Dr. Robert Prince. Dr. Prince is the orthodontist that gives your high school something to really smile about. His office is located at 754 South Main Street in St. George. Call Dr. Prince for a free consultation and find out how easy and affordable it is to straighten your smile. In the bottom of the first inning for the Cedar Redmond, their uh, leadoff hitter, Josh Boyer, Yesterday, Boyer had a double, a score two different times in the game, and uh, also the catcher facing Harris and Goble. Goble's last outing was last Saturday when he threw an interesting no-hitter where he actually hit a couple of players and uh, walked a couple of players and ended up, uh, but still with a no-hitter and a complete game, 11-1 win last Saturday and now here he is again this Friday and here comes the first pitch from Goble and called strike second pitch outside so we have a one and one count for Josh Boyer A 
two on Count Boyer. Foul at uh, right into the uh, stands. Hopefully they made a good catch on that. Bringing the count to 2-2. Two, two. Two two pitch, fastball, and outside full count to Boyer. Ground ball, third base, and a nice throw over there at third base uh, to get uh, to get Boyer out on the first first at bat. Riker Tom, a second batter. Uh, Riker, the uh, the shortstop, got on base two times yesterday, as well as a double, and uh, walked two different times. First pitch is a ball. So we went out to Goble, and uh, Tom hit, uh, hit a, just a shot out to the left field, and he goes right down the third base line for the first single. Boy, just like that, he rounds first, looks at second, but that was an absolute shot down the line for a beautiful hit by Riker Tom. That'll bring up Trey Esplin. Esplin got on base one time yesterday, left coming hitting from the left side. He's had some big games for the Redmen this year. Earlier on uh, in, in the uh, first round of the playoffs, we'll see what uh, what Trey can do here. Inside pitch. Tom with some pretty good speed at first base. They'll be uh, looking closely at him. Goble, the lengthy pitcher, uh, looking over to make sure what uh, what Tom might do and now throws it over there to try to keep him close. Game brought to you today by InfoWest, the internet people. You can uh, check them out in St. George. Riker fakes like he's going to go and then holds up. Pitch outside. Now 2-1 count. 2-0 count, excuse me. Now a 3-0 count to Esplin. Again, went bat on balls yesterday on his third uh, plate appearance. See if he takes the take sign here. He does, but it's going to uh, get him on base. So now runners at first and second. For the cleanup hitter, Brecken Lewis, also pitching today. Lewis, his first time up, hit one right to the warning track, and then was a little bit uh, had a little bit more success in the, in his third at bat as he knocked it over the left field fence here at Bruce Hurst Field. Plenty, uh, very impressive shot that really was uh, the key to the Cedar Redmond win yesterday. Ball gets past the catcher. Everybody advances here. And not uh, the best of control for Goble so far. So Riker Tom to third. Esplin to second. And a 1-0 count. Now certainly a two-run score on any type of a base hit. This time for Brecken Lewis. Licking his chops now knowing uh, 
he has a chance to help himself on the mound as well. Swing and a miss for strike one. One won the count. Cedar in their very impressive looking white uniforms. Gold and red uh, trim. Strike on the outside corner and uh, Lewis is unable to, to hit that. One-two pitch to from Goble. And Brecken cannot catch up with the Goble Heat, and that is a huge second out. Now, uh, Johnny Jenkins. Johnny Jenkins uh, playing a little first base today. Was a designated hitter yesterday. Jenkins got on base three different times yesterday, and... Uh, He's going to be looking for uh, just that pitch that he wants. He's got it. Again, it's going to be tough uh, tough enough in this game for anybody to score. Got to take advantage of the runners on the on base right now. 1-0 count to Jenkins. like a change up and it hit the outside corner for a, a called strike. 1-1. One, one. Outfield playing uh, Jenkins to pull the ball. And that fastball cannot connect. 2-1 count. And a ball getting past. Here comes Tom, and he is able to sneak in. Catcher could not pick it up again. A second wild pitch. Riker, Tom able to get the first, first score of the game. I didn't know if that was really going to be deep enough for him to get in, but uh, Tom had a great jump on it, and the catcher hesitated for just a second and couldn't even get the ball in. I don't think Goble was quite ready there to throw it as well. So Tom, uh, with great hustle, gives Cedar a one nothing edge. Trey Esplin on the uh, pass ball goes to third as well. Jenkins, foul ball. So that is going to move it to a 2-2 count to Jenkins, wearing number 23. Fastball a little bit high to load the count. 3-2. A lot of things happen here in the St. George area today. Uh, National Junior College Softball Championships. Have Dixie State's girls uh, actually uh, right next door to us playing. They put Jenkins on 
intentionally. A little bit interesting there. So runners at first and third. Dusty Hanna, the pitcher yesterday, he'll be uh, playing right field today. Hanna with a huge home run as well yesterday for, for the Redmen. First pitch to Hanna, that is going to hop over the uh, third baseline. First strike, foul ball. Hanna went the distance yesterday. Also helped himself with a home run and a single. Boy, once again, pitcher and catcher having a little bit difficult time. There's been a lot of outside uh, outside pitches today. Goble struggling just a little bit as that ball is outside and for the third time. Bithel uh, diving for the ball. Off speed pitch that time by Goble and uh, Hannah not able to catch up with that. Two outs, one to the count. Goble. Goes down swinging. So after one, it is one nothing. We love purchase business in our office. This is in our branch. This is what we strive to do. Is we want to be number one. In purchases and we recognize that realtors builders affinity partners they play a large role and a key role in making us successful so we try to do everything we can to be able to deliver on our promises to create events or opportunities to be able to just stay in front of them and to get to know them and just be a part of their business we treat it as a true partnership Now is the time to push yourself, to dream, to learn, to achieve. Moments like these come once in a lifetime. This is your opportunity. Challenge yourself, explore, create. Belong to something you can be proud of. Do it for yourself. Excel, reach, become. This is who you are. This is Snow College. Top of the second inning here, Bruce Hersfield at Dixie State University. Lovely day today. Yesterday we had lightning uh, storm, we had rain. Very miserable today. Looks like we are used to what we norm St. George people are used to. Harrison Goble, the pitcher, will lead things off here in the top of the second. Curveball stays high, and now a 1-1 one, one count. 4, 5, and 6 coming up for, for Pine View. Two one count to Goble. Goble a senior. Chopper down the left field side. That'll be foul. Two-two count from Lewis. Curveball. It is a strike three, and then. Uh, Drops the ball and then has to throw Goble out and does. Josh Boyer with the put out. One out now. Dakota Donovan steps it, uh, 
steps the bat for the first time today. Big right-hander in Dakota. First pitch called strike. Donovan strikes it out to left field. He'll be on. One hopper out to last and in left field, and uh, that puts Donovan on the plate on first base. For the first hit for Pineview. Again, another single, and that's all they had yesterday was about nine, eight singles. Up to bat for the Panthers, Hunter Hansen. He bats from the left side. Donovan takes a fairly comfortable lead. First pitch called strike. Hitting that outside corner. Hansen strikes it to the center fielder. Donovan goes halfway. Now he's going to have to go back for the second out. Lewis 9-1 on the year with the 1.25 ERA. So he has uh, done the job on the, on the hill for the Redmond this year. Back-to-back left-handers for the Panthers. Brooks Barney, the first baseman. Steps into the plate for the first time. Fastball called strike. Oh, one pitch to Lewis. Down past Jenkins. It goes all the way out to the deep to the right fielder. And they're going to send all the way. Here comes Donovan. And Donovan's going to slide in to tie up this game. So the ball was mishandled on the way in. They turned around and uh, Dakota Donovan paying a little bit more attention than the Redmen were. And Dakota goes all the way from first base. And scores. So a stream, streaming shot down first. Who thought that was going to be enough to uh, to tie this score at 1-1? But we'll give Barney credit on that. He hit a nice shot, and uh, and then the rest of it to to Donovan to make things happen. Blake Ince, the left fielder, at his first time up. So I, they're going to give an air on that uh, play coming back in, yeah, to uh, which allowed Donovan to score. Now 0-2 the count to Ince. We've had some awfully good baseball here at Bruce Hurst Field the last couple of days. Chopper, Lewis, can't hold on to it. And Ence is going to go to first base and put Barney at second base. Tough, uh, tough one there for Lewis to maybe hold on to. They're going to give him a base hit on that. So uh, Pineview full of singles. And Cash Walker who bats ninth, will uh, step to the plate for the first time. He looks like he's showing bunt a little bit. And 
So a two out rally for Pineview. Runners at first and second, two outs. Walker had a very decent game yesterday. And a shot right up the middle and it's gonna get past the shortstop. Here comes Barney. Does he get in? Yeah. Well, they call him safe. Umpire called him safe at first. Barney chose not to slide, which uh, a little bit surprising there. And he looks like he hopped right over the top of the of the catcher Boyer, giving Pineview a 2-1 edge. So another RBI single for the Panthers. That is going to go back to the top of the lineup to Johnson. Johnson flew out to the right fielder in his first at bat today. Off-speed pitch by Lewis. Called strike. Now 0-2 the count. Lewis hasn't had a lot of games this season that he has given up two runs at all, let alone in this, this early in the game. Curveball. High fly. See if that's going to stay in play or not. Boyer... Looks like he has room and sure enough does, but not before the Pineview Panthers score two runs. Pineview leading 2-1 uh, going into the uh, bottom half of the second inning. We'll be back right after the... Bottom of the second inning for the Redmen. They scored one in the first inning. Now Ryan Slack to the plate for the first time. He's a designated hitter today. Two hits yesterday. First pitch to the second baseman and an easy out for three. For Slack and one pitch, one out. That brings up Brady Lassen. Lassen, the left fielder. First pitch called strike. Another fastball called strike. So Lassen, a little bit in the hole here. Lassen scored one time yesterday and uh, got on in a fielder's choice. Also one single. Harrison Goble on the mound for Pineview. Foul ball. O2 
2 to Latham. Timeout called. Cedar scored one run in the first inning. Pineview came back and scored two in the top of the second. Fastball outside corner. <laughs> they want that one, but didn't get the call. Ball one. Base is empty. One two pitch. Lassen goes down swinging. Third strike. Out today, so far, and this early on for uh, for Goble. Bracken Yardley hitting from the left side. The second baseman uh, at bat tonight takes a look at an inside pitch for ball one. Two zero now. The count to Yardley. Yardley uh, only was used like in a speed up position yesterday, and now uh, now a three count for the from Goebel to Yardley. Yardley wearing number three for Cedar again. Twenty one and five on the year, and four straight balls is going to. Hardly on, on first base. Ninth batter uh, will walk, which brings up Josh Boyer. Boyer, the catcher. Off speed pitch to Boyer. A little bit low for ball one. Pineview calls timeout. Coaches running out to the to the field, and the entire infield is going to uh, spend some time out there. Again, game brought to you in part by the Washington City Community Center. Beautiful facility, indoor outdoor pool. Uh, climbing walls, uh, about anything you could possibly want. A lot of classes that go on at the Washington City Community Center. Great place to take the family or is to get a good workout. Yesterday, Boyer scored two different times, including uh, helping himself with a double. First time today, Boyer shot right off the bat on the first pitch of the game to the third baseman. Yardley with a not too much of a lead, but Goble wants to make sure it doesn't get any further than that as he hustles it back to first base. 1 0 the count. Does not get the call on the outside. I'll tell you, yesterday, everything on that outside plate was being called for a strike. So far, not as often as so far today. Goble, curve, 3-0 count. Two outs. That is seven straight balls. See if Yardley looks. And now we'll make it eight in a row. But just like that, Goble struggling a little bit, walking back to back batters. With the heart of the, of the Redmond lineup coming up. Riker Tom with a single, and he scored the only Redmond run.
First pitch outside for nine straight balls for, for Harrison. Cedar looking to take advantage of a, of a struggling uh, Panther pitcher. And that's his 10th ball in a row. Goble really looking to uh, hit the corners, not wanting to put anything over the middle of the plate. Pineview throws out uh, a potential reliever, starting to get a couple of people warmed up. Third pitch for Goble, and this time called for a strike. Good idea to just wait and wait until you finally get a, a called strike. And after 10 pitches, uh, the Redmen finally see one. 2-1 the count. Riker Tom, shot to the, to hits the umpire. And is that gonna be enough? He takes the time, <laughs> the umpire takes the time out. The, uh, the home plate umpire makes the call, says that uh, the runner to second was called out on the force play, but I uh, will see what they happens there. The, uh, the, the base umpire got hit in the ankle and turned around and did not, did not make the call from, the, from uh, Boyer going from first to second. Very likely would have been an easy force, but... Uh, we're seeing what the what the decision is, and so far everybody's staying on the base. So I think that is going to bring up the bases loaded. I do think that Tom was a. I do think he did beat it out uh, after the ball hit uh, to hit a shot off the umpire. So do we give uh, the umpire an assist on that one, and that brings up Trey Esplin. Esplin walked the first time up. He steps out of the box, wants Goble to be thinking about this a little bit more. For Cedar, now uh, see if they can take advantage of a huge break here. Bases loaded, two outs. Esplin, right down the middle for a called strike. It looked like the, um, the the home plate umpire would, chose to make that call, but uh, but then waved it off. Another called strike. And Esplin wants to get that batter rolling with the bases loaded. Rie semifinals here, St. George, Utah. Winner of this game will go to the championship game. Loser will have to play tomorrow morning at 9. Esplin with a little weak shot to the, to the shortstop. Force is made at second. Redmond leave, leave three runners on plate, on base. Wow. Our game today is sponsored by Dr. Robert Prince. Dr. Prince is the orthodontist that gives your high school something to really smile about. His office is located at 754 South Main Street in St. George. Call Dr. Prince for a free consultation and find out how easy and affordable it is to straighten your smile. So Cedar leaves, leaves three men on base, and unable to score a run. We'll see how much that comes back to haunt, to haunt them.
for the Panthers. Logan Lafima, their second baseman and bat second, will be up uh, to start things off. So number 22, Logan Lafema, takes the first pitch and uh, shortstop has a struggle on an easy play right there and Lafemina is going to get on, on an air. Umpire going over to the Pine View dugout wants to have a couple of words with uh, with some of the players or some of the uh, coaches there. A little bit of heat after that uh, force play to second base. When Esplan went into excuse me when Riker Tom went into second base he slid pretty hard and uh, took a little bit of a shot that he felt was uh, inappropriate. Connor Clark, the third hitter in the lineup for the Panthers. Clark, the center fielder. Inside pitch, doesn't get the call. Now a 3-0 count from Lewis. Connor Clark waits and called strike. So 3-1, pitch right at the knees. So runner at first base, pretty good lead. He's going. Here's the pitch, and they're able to get him. So Logan Lefemina tries to steal that second base, and uh, that will be the first out of the inning. Trying to make something happen there, and, and a brilliant throw by Boyer. That was a strike to, to Clark. Now a full count. Fastball, barely misses, oh my. <laughs> and that will put Clark up first base. Now Harrison Goble, the cleanup hitter. Wanting to help himself out here, certainly. Struck out the first time. Goebel takes a cut at it, fouls it away for strike one. These two teams split earlier in the year. Curveball popped up. And Dusty Hanna pulls it in for the second out. Or for, excuse me, for the yeah, for the second out. Number 17, Dakota Donovan, who we ripped a, a shot of his first time up for a single. So runner at first pace and Donovan. Donovan uh, got the, the rally going. Inside for 
First pitch to Donovan inside. Now here's the second pitch, and he hits a shot over the second baseman. That is going to uh, keep Connor Clark at second base. But now Donovan two for two on the on the day on the on the day. Nice uh, outside pitch, and Donovan just took advantage of it and knocked it over to the uh, out to the uh, couple of hopper to the right fielder. So now runners at first and second. Hunter Hansen comes to the plate. He uh, knocked one out to the center fielder last time. Hanson hitting from the left side. That pitch hits the outside corner. One one the count. Shot up the middle. Tom with an easy play that time. He steps on uh, second base for the force. No runs on one hit. Two men left on for the Pineview Panthers. In the top of the third. Again, 2-1 score as you can see. We feel that when clients come to us, the most important thing up front is to take the stress out of a highly stressful environment, to be able to create transparency and to create a relationship of trust where they know that we're going to take care of them every step of the way. That's what's most important to us. And in the end, we've delivered on our promises. Bottom of the third, 2-1 the score. Pineview uh, scored uh, two in the second. Donovan Dakota went from first base all the way uh, to home plate on the single. And Lewis knocks a shot deep and it is over the fence. Homers in back-to-back -back games. That hit the top of the fence and boy, just enough to get it over. Rick and Lewis, beautiful shot, and that's going to tie the game 2-2. Lewis showing why he is going to continue his uh, baseball career right here on this field, playing for the Red Storm starting next year. Wow. Wow. Johnny Jenkins now steps to the plate. First baseman. First pitch way outside. Didn't quite look like that was going to have enough. But boy, he hit that top of the fence and just rolled on over for Lewis. Now Jenkins takes a shot. and His, his hit is going to go to uh, the center fielder and bounce in for a, a single. So Cedar has tied this 2-2 uh, with Dusty Hanna coming to the plate. Now Hanna hit one out yesterday. Hanna was the pitcher yesterday against Bear River playing right field today. First pitch called strike. Jenkins on first. Goba looks over. Here's a pitch to Hannah, and he wanted all of that one. 
and got none of it. Hannah <coughs> goes down swinging for the second time today. That will be the first out. Hannah swung on two pitches. Looked like it might have been a little bit outside. Now the designated hitter, Ryan Slack. He hit through a, a shot to the second baseman. And the ball getting past the catcher and that will let Jenkins uh, hop on over to uh, second base. He didn't anticipate it. But saw what happened. Bithel couldn't quite keep up with it and now uh, Jenkins will, will sit on second base. That is the third or fourth pitch that has gotten past Bithel. That one may be on him. The other is on Goble. Slack playing in the designated hitter position today. Curveball. Hits just the inside part of the plate for the second strike. Count is now one and two. Cedar with 21 wins on the year, yet Pineview out of Region 9 was the uh, region champions. Cedar the last team to defeat Pineview April, way back in April. Curveball, way high. Goble, ball hits off of off of Goble. Second play. Oh my! What a play! Beautiful, beautiful play by Lafemia. That is going to be a it's gonna, it hit off of Goble. That is actually going to be a one four three play. But Jenkins does go to third on the second out. So Lafemia had to hustle over there after Goble uh, just tipped it. And boy, what a great play that time to to be able to to uh, to get slack out. That brings up Brady, L Brady Lassen, who struck out his first time up today. Outside pitch. That will be ball two. Just outside for ball three. Goble had a little bit of struggle uh, in earlier innings today, throwing 10 straight balls, walking two batters. Bethel with the signal. Goble, high, ball four. And Lassen will be happy to get on base any way that he can and be happy to take a uh, base on balls, which brings up Braden uh, Bracken Yardley, who also walked last time. Bracken Yardley will bat from the left side. Bracken Lewis uh, opened this half of the inning up with a uh, solo home run. To tie the game at two apiece, and Yardley takes a called strike. And 
And that hits him right on the right, uh, right elbow. So he will get on base uh, for the second time as well. So base is loaded for the top of the order for Josh Boyer coming up. Again, I want to thank our folks at InfoWest, the internet people. So many people take advantage of their great services here in St. George. Also Beehive Rental and Sales. They are helping us out today uh, with some of our equipment over at 3A Softball. So Boyer walked his last time up. So for the second time today, Cedar has the bases loaded with two outs. Last time they were unable to score any runs in, under these circumstances. Boyer takes the first pitch for a called strike. Goble, outside pitch there. Fastball way outside, one and one the count. Jenkins at third, Lassen at second, Yardley at first. Curveball, called strike. So one and two. Cedar does not want to leave three more guys on the base as they did uh, in the last inning. Excuse me, in the, in the first inning. Curveball, high, called strike. And they just step on the, uh, <laughs> step the, on the home plate for the force out. So for the second straight inning, Cedar leaves three on the base paths. So we're three innings uh, in the books. We are tied 2-2. Half the three innings, score is 2-2. Two, two. Pineview has had uh, all singles so far in both yesterday's game and today so far. Brooks Barney, who also had an RBI single in his first time at bat, will lead things off in the top of the fourth for the Panthers. First pitch, fouled away. Right toward my car. Pineview has five hits on the day, Cedar just three. Cedar also has, has two airs that have been a little bit costly. Brooks from the right, excuse me, from the left side fouls it off for two straight pitches. For an 0-2 count.
Barney Ware at number 21. 0-2 oh, pitch curveball, and for the third straight time, Barney uh, hits a foul ball. Brecken oh, Lewis, oh, Lewis, the pitcher. Rocks and four for four. Going to run out of baseballs here. Barney for the fourth time. Knocks one uh, foul and over the uh, fences here. Lewis inside. Ball one. Fastball called strike. Outside corner and uh, Barney knew it, but he could not get around on that one. So called strike first out. Blake Entz, left fielder. Hit a single uh, in his first time about today. Ants facing Lewis for the second time and a shot down third base. Esplin could not come up with that one. And that will be the sixth hit of the game for the Panthers. Yeah, I think Ants is looking right into that one. That brings up Cash Walker for the Panthers. He hit a, a single, an RBI single, his first at bat. So runner at first, two outs. Walker shows bunt. They throw the ball back to first. Walker threw down a bunt yesterday, and he was able to beat it out. He has got great speed. Actually, he beat out two different hits yesterday. Third baseman coming in. Now Walker pulls back, hits to right field, and, uh, and nearly a double play. That'll be the second out. Nice play by Hannah to get the ball back to, uh, to first base to, to keep Entz safe. So back to the top of the lineup now with Tyler Johnson with two outs. Johnson 0 and 2 on the game so far. First ball outside. Johnson fouls that away. Now 1-1. One, one. Curveball, outside corner for strike number two. Here's the pitch. Ants take second. 
Boyer unable to even uh, corral that in in, in time. So a 2-2 two -two count. Pitch just a little bit high. Count will now be full. Pineview has taken advantage of a couple of Cedar errors and uh, and here comes the full pitch and it's going to be just inside. Johnson will get on base. So base on balls for Johnson, runners on first <coughs> and second two outs with Logan Lefemina. Got on last time, but uh, was thrown out when he tried to steal second. Curve ball, outside and low for ball one. The feminine does a great job. He's already made a couple of big plays from his uh, second base spot. Shot's gonna get through the hole. Here comes Clark, here's the throw, and they're gonna cut it off, and Clark's gonna score. So La Femina with a RBI single. Tyler Johnson goes to second. And that brings in Ench to give Pineview a 3-2 wedge. Pineview has done a great job in this tournament so far, taking advantage of just singles and making a lot of plays. And that brings up Connor Clark. Connor, Connor 0 and 1, first pitch. Called strike. Walked his second time up and scored. So one one the count. Pineview has had seven hits so far against Cedar. Curveball went outside. Two one. Winner plays tomorrow in the championship game. Loser will go play the winner of the consolation bracket at 9 a.m. Would not be shocked in any way to see these two teams play again tomorrow for the, for the title. Called strike to Clark, 2-2 two -two the count. Runners again, first and second. Outside pitch, just misses to load up uh, the count. Three, two count, and they are able to get <laughs> Interesting. Lewis throws it over to first, and for the second time today, Lefemina gets called out on bases. Very interesting call there because uh, Lefemina looked like the, the tag was on the middle of his back, but he is rung up, and that uh, will be the third out. Pineview scores 0 on one run to take a three two lead. We'll be back right after these messages. We feel that when clients come to us, the most important thing up front is to take the stress out of a highly stressful environment, to be able to create transparency and to create a relationship of trust where they know that we're going to take care of them every step of the way. That's what's most important to us. And in the end, we've delivered on our promises.
Location, Bruce Hurst Field, St. George, Utah, home of Dixie State University. Pineview coach is still uh, chatting to the umpires about uh, that last call that took Lefemia out at, at first base. Still not going to change the call. So at the bottom of the fourth, it's going to be Riker Tom. Tom is two for two on the game so far. Scored the first run of the game. Tom's first pitch, foul ball, and it's going to be out of play. Fastball. Pass Bithel back to the back of the fence. 1-1. One, one. Second consecutive pitch by Goble. Hits the dirt outside. Tom, it may get uh, past, uh, but nope. Johnson's able to pull it in. Nice play that time by the shortstop for the first out. That'll bring up Trey Esplin. Esplin got on the first time uh, with a base on balls and the second time on a fielder's choice. Hitting from the left side. Called strike. Now one one count. Everybody playing pretty deep for Espen. Espen fouls it back to the fence for the second strike. One out, one to the count. Nobody on base. And another ball in the dirt. That got past Bithel. And Trey Esplin with a nice single there. And he looks like he may run and try to go second, but he'll wisely holds back a good strong hit by Esplin out to the left fielder for his first hit of the day is up uh, the hero of the game so far for Cedar the pitcher and uh, Brecken Lewis who hit a beautiful home run his last time up solo shot in the last inning You can rest assured Goble's going to be cautious on what he throws him here. and Probably nothing over the middle of the plate. But also wants to get ahead of the count. And that first pitch in for a ball. Second pitch. Knocks to the ground. And that's uh, going to be easy for Esplin to take, uh, to take second base. Goble threw a curveball and it uh, was about 5, 10 feet short. Third, 
So that helps Lewis licking his chops now, knowing that a base hit's going to uh, to score Esplin. Curve ball in for a strike. They throw it back to second. Esplin able to get back in time. Panther fans can't be pleased about that. They certainly want a little redemption from the, from last inning's call. Lewis with the homer yesterday and also one today. Goble. Curve. Inside, called strike, 2-2. Two -two. Ball three outside. Count is full. One out. Center fielder playing almost to uh, halfway to the left field. Huge gap along uh, the, the first baseline and uh, right up the center field spot. And he is able to get uh, Lewis swinging. Took something off of that one and that uh, exactly uh, couldn't, Lewis couldn't keep up with that and uh, that's a huge second out. His second strike out of the game. Johnny Jenkins who got on last time on a nice hit right after the, the Lewis home run. Runner at second base. First pitch to Johnny. Outside fastball ball. Now 1-1 one, one count. Jenkins asks for timeout, steps out of the batter's box. After this game, uh, we will be broadcasting the Bear River Bears who uh, played against this Cedar team yesterday. Came back and uh, knocked off Park City today. They will take on Snow Canyon, who had a huge 11-inning uh, win last night against Desert Hills. Slow curveball outside now, 2-1 to Jenkins. Three to the score. Bottom of the fourth inning. Three one count from Goble to Johnny Jenkins. Runner at second base, two outs. No no score this half of the inning for Cedar. Jenkins will get on base one more time today. His second walk on the day. He has been on base all three times, which will bring up Dusty Hanna. Timeout is called. Game brought to you in part by Robert Prince, uh, one of the local orthodontists in the St. George area. 
Tire infield having a little visit here. Dusty Hanna with two st strikeouts today, both going down swinging. But he has power. He knocked a home run out of this park yesterday. Players resume their positions. And we will see what Hannah can do here. A lot of curveballs from Goebel. That one called for a strike. Fastball go goes right past Hannah on that one. So he's got to decide what Goble's going to throw this time. He's seen uh, both a nice curve as well as a fastball. Beautiful day right now here in St. George. Here's a pitch inside and high. <coughs> one, two. Wind blowing out toward left uh, left field. Hannah, swing, rips one down, and it'll be foul. That left field side looking into the sun right now. Center fielder has kind of pulled over to the left side. Huge gap between the left and right center and right fielder. And for the third time today, Hannah goes down swinging. Leaves two more people on base. Cedar has left eight men on base in four innings. We'll be back right after these messages. We love purchase business in our office. This is, in our branch, this is what we strive to do, is we want to be number one in purchases. And we recognize that realtors, builders, affinity partners, they play a large role and a key role in making us successful. So we try to do everything we can to be able to deliver on our promises, to create events or opportunities to be able to just stay in front of them and to get to know them and just be a part of their business. We treat it as a true partnership. Top of the fifth inning here at Bruce Hersfield, uh, Dixie State College for the Panthers. Number three, four, and five in their, in their lineup. Connor Clark, who scored the last time, he got on base on balls, was able to uh, score in the third inning. First pitch, shot passes Esplin. And just like that, uh, Connor Clark on base. Fastball, and he caught all of it. Esplin uh, took a dive at it, but couldn't quite get there in time. Mm -hmm. 
which brings up Harrison Goble. Batty number four in the lineup today. He takes the first pitch right out to left field, looking into the sun and finally brings that down. Nice play. So that brings up Dakota Donovan. He scored the first run for Pineview. He has uh, a single in both times up. He went right field and left field in his two at bats so far. Donovan takes the curve, first pitch curveball. A little bit of a struggle here. Uh, comes Hannah. Hannah able to get inside the, and catch that ball for the second out. Redman able to take the fourth and uh, fourth and fifth hitters out on two pitches. So far, two outs. Esplin has, uh, excuse me, Lewis has thrown just four four pitches so far. Still runner at first base. Hansen, 0 for 2, comes uh, up to bat. He's on that left side. And he rips the shot out to Hanner in right field. Waited for that fastball, and he got all that one. That'll put Connor Clark at second base. With Brooks Barney wanting to start another two-out rally. So back-to-back left-handed hitters for the Panthers. First pitch to Barney, and he's trying to go after the first pitch as well. Knocking that uh, down the right field line and out of play. So they have seen something in Lewis so that uh, the Panthers have jumped on his first pitch on every at bat. Oh, one count, fastball outside, one, one. Two outs, Pine View ahead, three to two. In the top of the fifth inning, I apologize. Let's get that adjusted. Barney got caught looking last time, got called out on strikes, but hit a RBI single his first at bat. That's what that's what brought in Donovan. Hit a shot out to the left field and uh, ended up uh, an error and uh, on the Redmond and uh, Dakota was able to score all the way from first base. Outside pitch. Boyer able to control it. Now that is going to be to two one count with two outs. Fastball popped up. Should be playable and caught to end the inning. Five view leaves two on. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Coming up for Pineview, excuse me, for Cedar. Ryan Slack, Brady Lassen, and Bracken Yardley, number seven, eight, and nine. 
quarter. For women. Again, I want to thank Snow College, one of our sponsors today for this game. Also, Robert J. DeBry and Associates. Give them a call here in the St. George area, 656-0198 for a free consultation on your potential needs. Ryan Slack squares up to bunt. He is over two on the uh, the day. Last time up, hit hit a quick shot to uh, right past one off the mid of Goble to the second baseman, and then a put out. Count now one one. Cedar needs to get things rolling here. They've left eight runners on base in the last three innings. Curveball goes way to back to the back to the backstop. I start to see why uh, Coach uh, Pine View coach called uh, gar called uh, his no hitter wildly effective. Hit to the shortstop, Johnson. And they're able to pull him out. Left fielder Braden Lassen, who uh, struck out the first time at bat and uh, walked the second time. Goble has thrown a ton of pitches so far today. And that one scratches and hits Lassen. No harm, no foul, but that is another runner for Cedar. Comes a point in time if you do not take advantage of it, it is just going to come back to, to cost you. Two different times they've left runners uh, full and last inning with two men on. One out. Left-handed uh, Bracken Yardley. He shows bunt, squares up. Only play is going to be at first base. So a sacrifice by Yardley to get Lassen at second base. Lassen to second base. That brings up Josh Boyer, the catcher. Got caught looking last time. Good leadoff hitter is Boyer. Boyer looked and wanted that off-speed pitch, but uh, that is gonna, did not like it enough. He didn't pull the trigger. Ball one. Excuse me. They call that a strike. Well, 
Boyer asks for and gets timeout. Boyer out in front of that one for on that off-speed pitch for a called for a swing str swinging strike. One two the count runner at second. Outside pitch again by Goble. Nice job by Bithel to keep that in front of him. Outfield straight away. Off speed pitch, gonna go right to the second baseman, pulls it down. And the Panthers get out of that one. So one more runner left on base. We are gonna go to the top of the six. We'll be back right after these messages. played five complete innings and so far the Pineview Panthers and I'm playing very smart ball ahead uh, three game uh, three to two over the Cedar Redmond this in the championship uh, bracket semi-finals winner will play in the finals tomorrow at 11 a.m. loser will uh, play in the uh, consolation round at 9 a.m. for a chance to uh, have another crack at that today's winner. For the Panthers, their uh, number eight batter in the order, Blake Enns. All Blake's done today is go two for two and score a run. Curve ball, left hanging a little bit for a ball one. Fastball, shot. Yardley handled that one with ease and uh, quick shot and one out. Cash Walker. One for two, and the curveball inside, and he thought he, he might have gotten hit on that, but uh, curved just enough to miss him, but inside for a ball. We talked about Walker's speed a little bit earlier in the game, but boy, uh, he beat out two balls yesterday. Another curveball, that's going to go fairly deep into uh, right field, but uh, Hannah able to corral that. For the second out, that's only three pitches so far by... Uh, by Breck and Lewis, he'll be happy to take that. Now the top of the order, Tyler Johnson. He uh, walked last time up, 0 for 2 prior to that. Played a nice job out in the field at uh, his shortstop spot.
Fastball right down there for a strike. Last inning, Pineview going for that first pitch uh, on nearly every at bat. This time being able to show a little bit more patience. Curveball inside. 2 1. Tyler Johnson will go and on first base. That's the second walk in a row for him. Starting to get a little bit tight now. We are in that uh, top of the sixth inning. Logan Lefemina with one of the most interesting games of anybody so far today. He has... Uh, Gets a called strike. He has been on uh, base the last two times up, but has been caught uh, uh, going to second on stealing once and then going back to first and got called out last inning or two innings ago. La Femina curveball hits a shot at maybe in the gap, but no. Austin is able to pull it down for the third out. So we will go to the bottom of the six. We come up with the uh, bottom of the sixth inning. It is going to be batters two, three, and four for the Redmen. Again, want to thank InfoWest, one of our, our title sponsor for the 3A baseball tournament and softball tournament, Academy Mortgage. Give Matt Hickman a call, and uh, he will help you out. He's excellent. Uh, Excellent at working with people uh, to get your home needs taken care of. Harrison Goble, he's gone the entire way so far for the Panthers. Riker Thompson has got a pair of hits and flew out uh, on a line drive to the shortstop last time at bat. He has scored one run so far for the Redmen. First pitch for a ball. Here's the second pitch. Riker looks and shows bunt. Then pulls back. Ball now, or count 2-0. and oh. Riker once again shows bunt. Goble can't get it over the plate. Now we have a 3-0 count. Hunter Hansen keeps running in from his third base spot, but uh, Thompson or Tom shows bunt again, pulls it back, and a called strike. Goble has had a little bit of struggle in his control today. Fastball, and it, it's a foul ball, and it hits off of Tom. Might have poked off his foot or leg. And now we have a full count. He looks down at Coach Felstead, asks him if he's uh, okay. And Riker said, you bet. Full count, no outs. Bottom of the six, hot shot to the shortstop. He has bobbles it, but able to get him out in time. Boy, nice play by Johnson. Johnson uh, 
had a little bit of a struggle with it, but then quickly made that throw to first base. Barney able to put it out. Well, that's first out in the books. In the bottom of the sixth inning, Trey Esplin, the third batter in the order. First pitch high, ball one. He shows bunt, outside pitch called strike. Foul ball, one, two. Pineview does not have a extra base hit in today's game or yesterday's game. And Cedar has left nine men on base. Two big keys in this game. Esplin, one hopper to Goble, and he throws it over to Barney for the second out. Now Breck and Lewis, who struck out twice today, but also hit a home run. We'll see if uh, he gets another dose of curveballs as he did last time up. First pitch, heads back to the backstop, ball one. This is the guy you want up right now, but you certainly wanted some people to uh, set the table for him. 1-0 pitch again. <laughs> Bithel having a tough time catching uh, some of Goebel's mess right now. 2-0. We will be broadcasting the Bear River Snow Canyon game. Loser goes home, winner advances against the loser of this game. Now that is a 3-0 count, and again, if I'm uh, Harrison Goble, I'm not giving Brecken anything close. But as you look down the order, uh, a little more Johnny Jenkins and Dustin Hanna coming up, and, and not even a question on that. I must have missed one pitch. I uh, thought that was ball four, but now it's 3-1. Reckon has seen nothing so far but curveballs, and that's inside, and that is going to walk Lewis. That's respect. <laughs> Doesn't want to give Brecken anything to, to, put, uh, to put that little ting on. But Johnny Jenkins has had himself a pretty good game. Two walks and a single. Jenkins had a couple of hits yesterday as well and scoring one run. So he has the power to do, uh, again, they uh, replace Lewis uh, as he is the, the pitcher with the speed up runner. Outside ball one. They are definitely playing him to pull. Center fielder shading far to his right into left field. A lot of real estate in that outfield. Johnny pops on up very high. Two out, bases, the runners run. And Lafemia pulls it in. And we are in the seventh inning. Top of seven coming up. Cedar has left 10 runners on base today. For the Panthers, three, four, and five coming up. 
They have held a 3-2 lead since the fourth inning. Pineview with nine total hits as opposed to Cedar's five. Cedar has had a couple of errors and they have both been costly today. Reckon Lewis stays on the mound for the Redmen. Awfully good game coming up a little bit later tonight. Bear River Snow Canyon right here on Deseret News and KSL.com. That game will start at about 7 p.m. tonight. We'll have it for you here. Bear River came from behind to knock off Park City a little bit earlier today. Uh, they lost to this Cedar team yesterday. But a lot of momentum and they played very well to take a crack at this Warrior team that uh, what took 11 innings, but they were able to get past uh, Desert Hills last night here at Bruce Hurst Field. First pitch to Connor Clark to start things off in the seventh inning is uh, inside for a ball. Clark uh, has scored one time today. He had a single and a base on balls. He knocks it in between the third baseman and the shortstop for his uh, second consecutive hit. That'll bring up Harrison Goble, the pitcher. So far, Goble 0 for 3 on the day. Strike out, fly out to left fielder, and a fly out to right fielder. Lewis, first pitch, ball. Goble squares up and looks for a bunt and knocks it foul. Haven't seen that out of him, especially from your cleanup hitter. So Pineview has definitely played, uh, taken advantage of things, played a lot of small ball in this tournament. Again, no extra base hits so far for Pineview. It's been all singles so far in the last two games. They scored eight runs yesterday, three so far today. Goble squares up, knocks down the bunt, cannot get him at second, so throws him out at first, so give Goble a sacrifice on that. That'll move Clark to second for the first out. Lewis looked at second, but uh, did not feel like he could uh, get the speedy Clark. And that brings up Dakota Donovan. Donovan two for three on the day. He scored a run, two singles. He'll see what he does early. He has not showed a lot of patience at the plate. He's been swinging early at anything that Lewis has thrown and he does it again. This time for a foul along the left field side. Probably we'll see Donovan on the mound tomorrow if Pineview is able to hold on to this lead. Interesting to see how that works out, uh, especially in the second game today with some of the pitchers and the number of innings that they can, that they're allowed to, to uh, pitch in an inning in a, in a week. 1-1 one, one now to Donovan. Donovan verbally committed to go play for Oregon State, but he's only a junior. Curveball. Donovan hits a deep shot to left field. I don't think it's enough to go over the fence, and boy, just at the warning track. Really, really nice play by Brady Lassen to pull that in. He was looking into the sun, and that's just going to be a long out, and that's all it's going to be for that. 
I think uh, Clark could have probably tagged on that, but he uh, did not take a chance on that, and that'll bring up Hunter Hansen from the left side. Good speed that time by Lassen. He had to go a long way for that ball. And you could see the reflection in his, in his sunglasses as he was looking up in the sun the entire time. So Hansen straight up the middle. We'll see if that scores Clark. Here comes the throw. They do not cut it off, but it is not in time. Connor Clark able to sneak past there with his, with his left hand and touches that plate. As that will uh, score Clark and Hunter Hansen now with back-to-back -back singles. A two-out rally. Back-to-back left-handed hitters for the Panthers. Now Brooks Barney, the first baseman. He flew out. And this side, boy, it goes right past Jenkins into, uh, into right field. And that is going to get... That is going to allow Hansen to go from first to third. Brooks Barney with a nice rip down the, down the line. It is now 4-2. Very, very key run at that uh, in, in the top half of the seventh. Two-out rally by the Panthers. A lot of singles for this Panther team. Time is called. Uh, Eric Felstead out there chatting with everybody in the, there. And now uh, they finally uh, go back to their, their spots there. But they are going to uh, keep Lewis on the mound. A nice shot by Brooks Barney down right past Jenkins. He uh, didn't really even have a, a good shot at that. It was such a fast... Uh, hit out to the right fielder. So runners on first and third, two outs. And Blake Entz at the plate. Blake Entz has a couple of hits tonight and he has scored one, to, one time. Flew out to uh, the second baseman, his last at bat. First pitch, Ants bunts, and it's a squeeze play, and it is going to be enough to, to get Hunter Hansen to score. Suicide, and boy, just like that, that keeps everybody alive there, and they could not get Ants as well. So an RBI for Ants, that now makes it 5-2. to two. Walker out to Hannah for the third out, but boy, not until the Panthers scored two critical runs. And that may be enough to get them into a championship game. We'll be back for the bottom of the seventh right after. We feel that when clients come to us, the most important thing up front is to take the stress out of a highly stressful environment, to be able to create transparency and to create a relationship of trust where they know that we're going to take care of them every step of the way. That's what's most important to us. And then we've delivered on our promises.
For you, bronze package. Triple the price, doubles the contract. You want a big muscle? You want a big muscle? I make your little muscle into big muscle. Say no to gym intimidation. Say yes to Planet Fitness. We're not a gym. We're Planet Fitness. Your locally owned and operated Planet Fitness is a proud sponsor of our amazing high school athletic programs. Back to live play here, bottom of the seventh inning. Coach Gargano of, uh, of the Panthers decides to switch a couple of things up. Brooks Barney, who has been playing first base all day, will now take the mound uh, to try to close this thing out. Harrison Goble goes over to first base, so they trade spots. So Goble pretty, uh, pretty effective, only to give up five hits tonight. Barney the Southpaw will be facing the number five batter, Dusty Hanna. Now, we've seen Hanna strike out three times tonight, but we also saw him hit a home run yesterday. Ryan Slack on deck and Brady Lathan in the hole, which could be the last uh, of Cedar's chances today. So, two runs, seventh inning for Pineview. To lead things off for uh, for this Panther team, and you can start to feel the momentum on that Panther side of the field. Hannah again with uh, three knockouts today. He has been punched out three times, all time swinging. First pitch, he swings at that one, and a little bit behind on that. Cedar just hasn't been able to get those bats uh, or really take advantage of the bats that they've had. They've had plenty of men on base. Second pitch inside, ball one, now 1-1. One, one. Blake Barney in for relief of Harrison Goble. Swing and a miss for Hannah. Hannah's played well defensively today, but has not been able to Connect it back. And Hannah goes down for the fourth time today. Dusty Hannah. Ryan Slack now uh, also 0 for 3 in the day. If Pineview prevails, they will play at 11 a.m. for the ch state championship game. Cedar, if uh, it ends up that they lose this game, will play at 9 a.m. against the winner of our game coming up against Snow Canyon versus Bear River. Back-to-back -back strikes for Slack. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Barney in for relief. Has shown some smoke and he's thrown back to back strikeouts. And the Redman down to its last out against Brady Lassen. Lassen made a nice catch out in left field just moments ago against a uh, Donovan uh, shot out to the fence. But uh, we'll see if he can get something going. He is. 0 for 1. He has walked and been hit by a pitch today. Curveball in for a called strike.
Barney looking sharp so far. Fastball right past last. And on that one, 0-2, we're down to one strike. Outside does not get the call. Lassen and the Redmond still alive, at least for another pitch. Five two pitch called out, game over. That is going to do it. Final score Pine View five, Cedar two. Again, as we mentioned, uh, Pineview moves on to the championship game at 11, uh, 11 tomorrow. We'll have it here on the Deseretnews.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in just a little bit for the uh, Snow Canyon Bear River game.